Hello everyone, welcome to another video and in this video we will see how we can chat with our images using computer vision and Azure OpenAI. So this is uh, like a low code solution wherein we will not be writing much of code because most of the code would be auto generated using the Azure AI Studio. So let's see how we can execute this flow. So the very first thing we need is the, an active Azure subscription. And once you have the subscription, the very first thing you need to do is you need to go ahead and create an instance of computer vision. So search for the computer vision service and click on create. Here you need to furnish all the required details and then click on review plus create. So if you're doing this, it will create a new instance for you, which is of computer vision. Next thing is we need an instance of Azure OpenAI. So you can click on Azure OpenAI, you can search it in the search bar, and then you can create an instance by clicking on this plus create button. So here you need to take care of very important things. So like this feature, the vision API is still not available in all the regions. So just make sure that you are choosing this region based on this particular chart. So this chart depicts where all this particular uh, preview version is available. So whenever you are creating a resource, make sure that you have this chart in mind. So here you need to furnish all the details and this is the place where you need to provide the proper region and click on create uh, next and it will create an instance of Azure Open AI. So in my case, I have already created both of these instances, so I'm not going to do it again, but let's go ahead and create uh, click on the instance which we just created. So by clicking on this, we are going to open Azure Open AI Studio. So we are on the Azure Open AI Studio and here, sorry, and here you can see uh, like, uh, deployments so click on deployments click on create new deployment and here you need to select gpt4 so when you will just select gpt4 you will get the model version which is vision preview just select that you can here you have only one option standard so we have to stick to this provide the deployment name here and then click on create so once these steps are done you will see that the new instance got created how uh, i'm seeing over here Okay, the next thing is we need to go ahead and start chatting with our images. So for chatting this, this is the same uh, UI which we have seen in my earlier videos. So what we can do is uh, here you can use this templates which are already existing for us. So these are the templates which you can utilize. But if you want, you can also go ahead and create the empty one wherein you can provide your own system message. So let me quickly provide some system message here. So you are an assistant who can answer questions based on given images. So feel free to change this prompt as per your requirements. So I'm just going with this one and here on the right hand side you can see that I have selected this model there is only one model which is deployed in this particular region so it has by default selected that for me but if you are having multiple then make sure that you are selecting the gpt4 one okay and here you can see this is the vision api so you can turn it on or you can even turn it off so let it off and we'll first try to experiment and see what happens when we are enabling this vision feature and when we are disabling this vision feature so I will quickly take some image. Mm, let's take this image. I will copy this from the internet and just paste it over here. And let's say, what is this image about? I'm going to ask a question, what is this image about? And see that I have not even uh, enable the vision API as of now we are still going with the default implementation and what it is saying is it is an image of a receipt so this is what uh, this is the response which I am getting it from GPT-4 without using the vision API now let's say I'm enabling this and when I'm enabling this you can see that in the settings the particular computer vision resource is automatically selected for me so if you don't see anything here, then you can also go ahead and create an instance of computer vision using this particular link. For me, it is already coming, so I will 
not do anything over here and I will be asking the same question here and I will say what is this image about and let's see how different the result is when we are using Vision API and when we are not using Vision API. So here you just got the one line, it is an image of a receipt, but here in this case with Vision API, I am expecting a little bit more details about what this particular image is about. So let's give it a few seconds. And you can see the response is here. The image is of a receipt which uh, details a list of items purchased along with their individual prices, a subtotal sales tax applied and the total balance due. So you can see that how descriptive the information is as compared to the earlier version. So this is one way and one benefit of using this. Let me ask another question here. What is the amount of Epson? So let me correct this typo here and it should come up with 7.50 meanwhile let's go ahead and figure out some more images so i have just searched for this image a supermarket image so i am going to ask my next question on this one so the total amount listed for epsom on the receipt is 7.50 which is exactly what we have seen on the receipt so next try out Let's try out another question for this particular image where we have lot many objects and here I will say is there no let's ask for are there cucumbers in the store. Let's see if it can figure this out. Meanwhile we will also go ahead and see if there are cucumbers so perhaps I can zoom it so this is the image and here are the cucumbers here you can see just in front of this lady so let's see let's wait for a few seconds and it should come up with an answer and this kind of feature is very useful when you need to analyze like a very complex image where you don't know where that particular object is so here you can see uh, here you can see yes there are cucumbers in the store they can see on the shelf in the vegetable section where the person is standing and this is where it is so let's see this enlarged image and here you can see the cucumbers where the person is standing and another good thing is it will also tell you these marks where the exact object is sitting in that image. So when I clicked on cucumbers, you can see that these are the cucumbers over here. And when I'm clicking on the person, you can see the person means this particular object on the screen. So this is how we can utilize this. And there are a lot many use cases which we can use it. Now let's take another final one. Uh, before that I can show you how you can utilize this thing in your actual application so whatever we are doing right now is just in the AI studio but you can also use this in your application so what you can do is you can click on view code here on the top and this is the Python code which got generated for the experiments which we are doing so what you need to do is you just need to update your keys over here the image path you need to provide and then here is the end point where it is making a call. So line number 97, it is also doing some kind of exceptional handling. And definitely you just need to tweak this code a little bit because and if you will see here, you can see that it is taking the image not as a path, rather it is converting the image in a base 64 and then passing it to the, passing it as a content. So here you have a role, then you have a content where which is taking like type of content which is image URL and then it is generating the URL and next here you can see the role of an assistant but before that you can see what is the image this is the query which user is asking and this has to be supplied in the text so under the usual we uh, user we user role we have a content which take these things so the first thing is related to the image and the second thing is the query uh, which user wants to ask uh, based on that image or for the given image Similarly, for the assistant, it is having content. So the text is the response which we receive from assistant. See, all these are the responses which it has clubbed. 
But the moral of the story is if you want to use this, what you can do is you can grab these few lines, how you can generate the base 64 encoding. And here are the few lines to make a call to our endpoint. So once this is done, uh, we are pretty much good to go for our implementation. Now let me quickly show you. So till now we have experimented on these individual images. Now what if you have a bunch of images sitting inside a folder and you just want to query uh, something for those images. So for that, what I can do is I can just take these images. So or I, I can just grab it from outside. So let's go back to this, take this image copy image and I will place it over here. Similarly, I will take that fruit market, vegetable market image and we'll paste it over here. And let's try to ask the same question. What is the amount of Ipsum? And here you can see now we are not telling that where this IPSIP related information is residing, which image is having this information. So it is up to uh, Azure Open AI as well as computer vision to check and get us the answer. So here you can see we got the perfect answer like we just said before. The receipt is 7.5. So these are the two images and definitely you can have many more images, but it should be able to get the answer and we are getting it as expected. So I hope you got an idea how we can use this. In my next video, probably I will tell you how you can use Azure AI search with the similar scenario to get more advanced implementation. Thanks for watching.